Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, it's been a while since part one of this comparison, uh, and I finally, after, you know, dealing with work, and dealing with life, and dealing with being lazy, um, yeah, we're finally here to do part two of the Varicam LT versus Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K comparison. So because there's enough example footage of both of these cameras in action, I decided to focus on two things. One is slow motion because there really isn't much footage out there of this camera doing slow motion. Um, and two is overexposure slash underexposure. And for the underexposure and overexposure test, we will be starting in log and we're going to see how the cameras fare that way. And then I'm going to take both of the cameras and I'm going to try to correct the image when it's overexposed, when it's normally exposed and when it's underexposed. And we're going to do this in both the first and then the second native ISO to see how both of them handle overexposure and underexposure. So without further ado, let's get into this. For this comparison, the LT will be shot in Intra 4K 422, and the P4K, using a speed booster, will be shot in B-RAW 5x1. Both cameras will be set at 2398 as a base frame rate, and will also be shot at 5600 Kelvin. So as I'm comparing the slow motion footage, I'm noticing that I can't really see too much of a difference between, you know, 23.98 frames and 60 frames. However, when we go up to 120 frames, I feel like the LT has, you know, cleaner, it has cleaner slow motion. Plus the LT can shoot 120 frames at 2K and also can shoot 240 frames at 2K, which is super great, and when compressed, it makes it look so much nicer. And the 240 frames per second just looks like, mwah, like it's it's so good. Like the water just looks like jelly, and it's satisfying. Ugh, I love it. And now that we have the fun stuff out of the way, let's get into the over and under exposure test. And I highly recommend you just watch everything through, especially if you're interested in both these cameras or you're just like a camera kind of person. You're like, I want to see what each of these cameras do. <laughs> yeah, I highly suggest you just watch the whole thing through and you look at it. Oh my gosh, just look at it. The Pocket 4K actually really surprised me in some aspects of this test. And in other aspects, the LT surprised me. So I think you're going to be surprised as well. Here we go. Actually, before we get into that, a quick disclaimer. This is my first time ever doing a test like this, and I have had no idea how to do this. So like, I know that Cinema 5D um, has done some tests like this, um, and, and, and I'm like, okay, I'll just try to emulate that, but then I'm like, what? what do I use as like the basis? So I'm like, okay, I'll just use f-stop as the basis for, for stops because stops still, you know, st <laughs> the stops of light still confuse me. I, I still don't have a grasp of that. It's math. I hate math. Um, <laughs> so, so we're just going to use, we're going to use f-stops as our base. We're going to start at an f 4.0 and that's going to be our base. Before shooting, I made sure that both cameras were equally set on the waveform. And so how this is going to work is we're going to start two stops overexposed and then we're going to go three stops under. And then towards the very end, we are going to go darker. Anyway, here we go. Let's take a look. Now, 
The first thing I noticed when comparing the two cameras in their first native ISO is that the P4K leans more into reds. The brown and orange seem to be more saturated in contrast to the blue, which seems to be less saturated. As far as noise patterns in the shadows and blacks, the two cameras have a different noise pattern as you see. I personally think the P4K's noise pattern is, you know, more, it, it feels much more digital and more clinical than the LT's, which actually feels like it muddies the image a little bit. When it comes to the second native, however, the P4K's image is absolutely ruined. It's completely blown out while the LT is blown out as well, but you can still at the very least see most of each individual square. It's 14 stops of dynamic range really shines here. I also noticed that at zero stops, the LT shifts the first two colors from brown and orange to brown and yellow, whereas the P4K shifts them to orange and yellow. So for this section, each camera is going to be using its base LUT. The Vericam doesn't exactly have one, so I'll be using uh, a specific 709 LUT, which I will put in the description below. And the P4K will be using its Gen 5 film to video LUT. It's a mouthful. <laughs> As the light decreases, I notice the P4K's noise patterns become much more noticeable than the LT's. However, the LT becomes more saturated. At two stops overexposed, I realized that I could get back some detail from the highlights with the P4K, but only enough to kind of be able to read some of the text and see only the black square. But on the LT, not only can I see the square, but at least six different colors.
Once we're back at zero stops overexposed, I see that there's a huge difference in color between the two cameras. The LT's blacks are more rich and there's less visible noise patterns than the P4K. Also on the waveform, we can see that the P4K starts to push the reds more while the LT stays more consistent. For the heck of it, I decided to push these cameras in their second native to their limits. I dimmed the aperture from 75% to 50% to 25% to 5% and then I turned them off. When underexposed, the P4K's colors start to lose consistency and the reds, greens, and blues start separating, as seen on the waveform. The LT stays consistent until the light is at about 5%. The P4K seems to have held together really well, which is super surprising. So here are my thoughts. Um, between the two cameras, it's really close. Um, the LT, I think, has a better dynamic range. Um, it has everything that you need inside of the body, you know, the sensor is incredible. The P4K can record raw internally. Um, it's got ProRes built in. It's, it's a small form factor. It's very light. The sensor is actually really good. However, after taking into account the first video and all the information uh, that we've kind of pulled together between both of the last video and this video, I still think that the LT is a clear winner. And that's my unbiased opinion. I do like the LT and I do like the P4K, but I feel like despite the P4K being a more expensive investment uh, and a much bigger body, you know, you have everything you need in there. Like setup speed is really fast. You've got a really great codex. You know, you have built-in NDs, you have the XLRs all ready for you. You have the SDIs all ready for you everything's kind of here whereas with the p4k you need you just you need to build and it takes time and and sometimes you don't really have that on the other side you know it's it's a small form factor so you can take the p4k and you can shoot fairly discreetly however with stats in mind and and what we've even seen in this video i think that the p4k is just not the winner. I, I think that the LT just takes the cake. And, and you know, these past two videos were not meant to diss the P4K or to uh, discourage others from buying the camera. I bought the camera and I still have it and I think it's a fantastic camera. This is merely a comparison to see, you know, the differences between an older cinema camera and a newer cinema camera. And that, that brings up another question. What makes a cinema camera a cinema camera? Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. And, you know, if you stuck around to the very end, thank you so much. I seriously appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't subbed, 
you know, consider subscribing. And also, let me know which camera you'd want a comparison of in the comments below. I'd love to hear, you know, what which ones you're interested in or which ones you think I should do next. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Tail slate.